cherche un peu de passion Les bonnes sont votre mémoire Les stupides croisent pas de gueule Que les chemins de qui Que les chemins de qui Who wants suck and shall go back We don't need them now Oh, why should we accept the change of mind? Because of today Kids, 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 we're gonna change our Bring back the street Shops built by all nation Kind of your street Kind of your street Kind of your street The street is a mirror For our country Let this arise and fall Of our nation Nation! The street that was a legend Is a mockery A part of the British tradition Come down the train You don't need no passport To see its fault Take a walk along that street you know. See what I mean Calibre Street Calibre Street Calibre Street Not what it used to be Calibre Street Not what it used to be Calibre Street Bells the dust are gone Calibre Street Bells the fish are gone Calibre Street Oh ho oh, oh. Gotta be sweet, oh, 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 oh. There's a tune you might know. The beginnings of punk. Um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, right, I let him talk. Go on. Right, you let me talk. Um, what was uh, <laughs> yeah, in London last year, right, there was a pub scene, and you had you had various bands playing a lot of you know the pubs in London. A lot of people were having music in pubs. You know, Hope and Anchor, the Ken in, uh, Kensington, the Nashville. <laughs> Jim, in or out? Come on. <laughs> Go on, man. Go on. Tell them about punk, Mark. The identification with, with, with 
to identify with something of their own. We've had no kids have had a message for years. saying how great the fifties were, how great the sixties were, you know, and we were all living off the sixties. How they related to the sixties? So having to put down all that old crap that was going down, you know, like, you know, we. We needed identity of our own, you know, 1977. No, this, this political know. angle ain't new. They've done it all before in that movie, yeah, Privilege, yeah. with Paul Jones. Street fighting man by the stones, you know. I mean, that was political, you know. But the point is, we're just, you know, talking about youth again, singing songs about problems of everyday life. Yeah, and people have just been singing songs about science fiction fantasy. You know, I mean, like no, what, what relevance is like, oh, I'll, I'll love my baby. You know, and I, I shagged my bird round the back street, you know, or it, what relevance is that today? There are problems, you know, which have been pushed underground for too long, which are today, you know, have to be brought People up. People haven't got life. time to think about the cosmos and the universe, you know, yeah. and they ain't got any money to live on. Yeah. The whole Western world's a big joke. You to go around, you know, you've got 50 pence, you know, just to get a meal or something. Oh, at the movies. Oh, yeah. it, was, it was totally boring, you know, after the, like, the, the hippie era, you know, when like everything was free yeah, and there, yeah. you know, it was like, you, you could live off that, you know, it was great, it was great well, to live off that. I used to live off that personally, you know, that scene, you know, that era, you know. But, uh, this is it, you know, and I, and I just thought, well, the crap that was going down then, you know, one second. The crap that was going down then, you know, it was like uh, not relevant to me at all, you know, it was nothing to do with the way I felt, you know, so I thought, right, do it myself, you know, consequently, you know, the band got together, you know, James Stevenson on guitar, Kerry Fortune on drums, and Kuswaski, our manager, you know, Simon Vitesse on bass, you know, we just got together, we thought, right, let's change it, let's do something. was like um, originate one of the first bands ever to play the Roxy you know with with other bands you know right um, and it's very 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 important to the music that's going down now it's very hardcore very political as regards to like we have the single like right to work you know, 
um, which is about, you know, millions of kids that leave school, you know, haven't got a job. You know, and the individual, really, the right for the individual to do their thing, you know, this is what it's about, you know, the right to work. When the punk rock business was starting up and groups wanted to play, they were rejected by everybody and everywhere. And um, so it was very difficult to get work for them. So the obvious thing was to try and do something yourself, which was equally as difficult because we have a lot of problems in, in London about licenses and drinking and playing loud music. Um, so there's a lot of problems came up about the same time. See, I managed a group called The Damned and also managed a group called Generation X. Um, when I worked with Generation X, I realised that there was a lot of problems that involved with uh, who was getting work for these bands. So the easiest thing probably was to do is find a place yourself. Um, this I did by finding a club called the Roxy Club. And uh, I put on the band called Generation X and it worked very well, which we knew it would. At the same time, a lot of new groups were coming and playing in London all the time. So they obviously contacted me to put on their groups to play in the club. But the club was on a very loose basis. I hired it every week and very expensive too because the man wasn't prepared to let me have the club because he thought there was too much risk involved because of teenagers and drinking and drugs and loud music. So I had to pay a very high rent to, to compensate him. Um, but it was worth it to me because we weren't so much interested in making money but just to have some fun and have an outlet for this new energy which was growing all the time, especially the music and the clothes and the fashions, everything. So we had an understanding between us, the sort of thing we wanted to do. So it became an immediate success and we didn't have to advertise because it wasn't necessary to bring people from the streets into the club because we only wanted people in the club who were interested. If they were interested in the music and the, uh, and the, and the clothes, they would come down naturally because of their friends would be involved in something. So it became a very um, exciting and uh, central point to, to, to all the punk rock. Um, because they had somewhere to, to create things, to mix with each other, to form new bands and exchange ideas. It stopped because it just got too much eventually. The money that was wanted from us, we couldn't afford to generate from the bands and from the, the people. But of course we still had the restraints of the outside world which was high rents and that they just wouldn't meet and we couldn't or we, we wouldn't put the prices up on the door because we would be in the same capacity as the people who, who had, were in rock music before where they were charging maybe five pounds you know, to get to see a group which we didn't want to do we were only concerned with charging maybe one pound to see three groups Zu den aufregendsten Gruppen auf dem Live-Album vom Roxy Club zählen die X-Ray Specs. Little girls should be seen and not heard.
things, I write most things about um, plastic things and artificial things. Um, you could say they're social comments, but they're slightly different to what anybody else is writing. <coughs> Do you like plastic? I mean, it's there, isn't it? I mean, it's part of yeah. now. It's not a question whether I like it. It exists, and I just write about things like that in my major environment. Most people associate bondage with sexual bondage and things like that. That's probably why they get banned, because they think it's perverted and, you know, they think of whips and things like that, but it isn't really. It's about any form of slavery, and it's against that. It's saying, no bondage up yours, you know, fuck off tonight. <laughs> <laughs> problems at the moment is identity you know people to identify something everybody's looking desperately to uh, try and identify with one thing instead of themselves and that's what that's about right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, i don't like out talking you know very much that's why i write songs <laughs> Eine riesen Demütigung für einen Engländer ist es, in einem Hochhaus ohne eigene Haustür zu leben. In einem derartigen Haus im Süden Londons wohnt Arturo Bessig, der 19-jährige Bassist der Lorcas, mit seinen Eltern. Die Lorcas bestehen seit ein paar Monaten und haben mit ihrer selbst verlegten Single Shadows großen Erfolg. It's just, I've always liked energetic music, but it became really stagnant over the last four years, sort of the heavy metal groups with long guitar solos and 20 minute numbers and uh, I know I just like it because it's so accessible you can get it's really easy to understand because it's you know two minute numbers and you get get straight to the point with no mucking around not like someone like I don't know Led Zeppelin or Black Sabbath or whatever it's really 
lot too long drawn out and go to sleep. I've fallen asleep at a Black Sabbath concert before. Even the volume can keep me awake. I was just really bored. The punk is so much more energetic and to the point, you know. The song punk groups like the Clash with political and social statements, what do you think about it? I think they're really good. I think they needed to be said. A lot of groups are just singing about love all the time. And that's always been done for years and years. Never, no one's ever sung political songs before. And it's about time somebody did, because it affects everyone all the time. There's no doubt about it. You can't get away from politics. It affects, it affects every, every move you make. From drinking a pint of beer to buying a car or whatever. It's all to do with politics, which really stem from money and the clash can put political situations and aspects of politics into really a short space of time in two minute numbers and really get a point over about it. I think it's really good that people are singing about politics. How long are you playing now with Beth? With, with the Lurkers? I don't know. Well, the, I've only been playing the bass since I've been with the Lurkers, which is about four and a half months, five months. But I've mucked around just playing the guitar for about five years without ever doing anything. Just uh, playing in my bedroom, you know, to myself, annoying my mum and dad <laughs> and making the or ornaments shake on uh, <laughs> people's mantelpieces, you know, making the windows rattle. It was the first time I've played with a group this time. The Lurkers, you know, it's really good. Better than all this stuff. What have you done before you become a musician? Worked as a storeman, gardener, packer in a factory, French polisher, uh, newspaper boy. <laughs> I was hot ten. Dog stand. <laughs> I, used to, I used to sell hot dogs <laughs> at race meetings. I've been out, I left school five years now, and I've been on the dole for about three years of that, haven't I? Off and on. Off and on for about three years out of five, unemployed. Out of choice mainly. Boomtown Rats. Useless. Not as good as the Lurkers. They are. Big record company behind them, putting all money into it. That's the only way you get a lot of fame. Corrupt. Sold out. Uh, do you think you may be corrupt too by the business sometimes? We haven't had the chance to be, no one's offered us any money. We've got managers, but they've got nothing. It's hard enough to get a packet of strings out of them, a set of strings, let alone £100,000 advance to live in luxury, to live in this place, right up in the, right up in the sky, talking to the birds as they fly past the windows. Uh, now, question to the parents, what do you think about punk rock and your son now as a, as a musician? Well, grand has gone on a bit, you yeah. know. Before, yeah, he's doing something he likes, right, yeah. <laughs> I've always been aimless, haven't I? Yeah, drifting about. Never done anything until I was in a group. Yeah. Have you ever seen a concert of the Lurkers? No. no. I haven't yet. <laughs> Come with earplugs on. I've only had his record, then. What is the record with you? It's alright. Yeah. Yeah. It's better than some of them, isn't it? Yeah. My mum said it's as good as anything the Rolling Stones have ever done, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> didn't you, mum? It's better, though. They've had it. Got to America, they're not in English anymore, they're not in British. It's mm -hmm. out. <laughs>
Das Red Cow in Hammersmith, wo die Lurkers spielten, ist weniger modisch als die Clubs der Innenstadt, dafür ist die Stimmung besser. Viele Bands haben hier angefangen, mittlerweile ist das Schild Free Admission aber auch schon durch Live-Music ausgetauscht worden. Vor den Lurkers sprang unangekündigt eine Band auf die Bühne, die meinte, Punk hieß, nicht spielen zu können. Zu den Schaltstellen im Punkbiss gehört das Büro von Miles Copland. Von hier managt er viele Gruppen und Plattenlabels und vertreibt Sniff and Glue, das wichtigste Punkmagazin. What do you charge it at? Uh, well, like, 50 pounds for four pounds. How much? 50 pounds for four pounds. Yeah, what's the circulation? Uh, 5,000 this last yeah. time. Do you, do, you, do you have anybody selling it here? Yeah, me. Because oh. you might not talk to Harry, because you know, I mean, he's selling all the, the glues, maybe he'd be interested in helping distribute it. Yes, it would be nice. I'll have to talk to him. Yeah. But he's already got a setup for it. I mean, that's a lot of people are coming to us because we've already established a uh, distribution network. And to slot something else in doesn't add any more cost to us and it saves everybody, it saves other people a lot of money. So, I mean, we can sniffy glue is up to 10,000 circulation now. And if they're shipping that kind of stuff out, you have another magazine, I'm sure you'd be interested in uh, doing something. Yeah. Well, you'll have to introduce me. Yeah, but he's here. You know. Hey, Harry! Well, I got rather bored with the things that were going on, and um, I had some of the people in the office were telling me that things were going on in the clubs and wanted to come down and see what's happening, and uh, which I did, and I spent time out in the clubs and 
see all the new groups. And uh, the Roxy Club was in the beginning then. Um, and I was very excited about it. Most of the groups I've been dealing with were groups in which were getting over 30 years old, almost 40. They had kids. Um, it was very difficult to work with them because you'd start having success and um, they wouldn't be able to follow through because of their home life. For instance, the Climax Blues Band. We had uh, a single which became a very big single in England, but very big in America. I had TV shows booked in Europe. They, couldn't, they wouldn't go because they had something to do with their families, which is fair enough, but it means it's very frustrating for somebody dealing with older people. They um, don't work very hard, and so when you see the young kids and the energy that, that is being expressed by these kids, also the political aspect of it to me was very exciting. I've always been interested in the politics, and these kids are actually reacting to the society, which to me is far more important. There are two places right now that are interesting musically. Uh, right now, that is New York City and, and London. London is is twice as exciting right now musically as is as is New York. Maybe it's because the the economic situation in England is is more aggravated. It creates uh, more ferment in the society. I don't know. Um, but London is a very very exciting place musically at the moment, and it's much easier for a group to get a start here. In New York, there are very few clubs that a group can play in. In London, there's CBGB, there's Max's, and one or two others. In London, there's 20, 30 clubs. All over the country, there's more clubs. So it's easier for a group to get in front of the people. I know you don't like folk music. By the way, I'm wearing a, I'm wearing a pair of Joan Baez's dirty panties. She wore them at the 1964 what? Newport Folk Festival. I was a big fan of hers back then, you know. I was only three, three years old. I didn't know no better, you know. She's okay. This song, this is for all you jerk offs in the audience. Ooh, look at the wankers. This is called You Make Me Cream in My Jeans. Die Killjoys fielen uns leider zu spät im Vorprogramm der Electric Chairs auf. Wir besuchten sie am nächsten Tag zur Probe im Greyhound in Fulham nach der mittäglichen Striptease-Show. <lacht> Like 
Killjoys, as you know, from Birmingham. Uh, we formed about a year ago in Birmingham through adverts in the papers, and we knew knew some of each other. And um, we would have, we would have, we would make it a lot quicker had we had come from London. But Birmingham is uh, 120 miles away, so it's obviously not it's not what London is. But um, uh, things are starting to go all right for us now. You know. We've got, mm. A lot of people interested in going down well wherever we go and we're accepted now in London, whereas we used to just play in Birmingham before. Can you please tell me something about the punk scene in Birmingham? It started off uh, really laid back at first, there were only a few to begin with, uh, and it's taken quite a long time to court, catch on in the, the initial stages, but John Tully and Barb Rellers have done a lot to promote uh, punk in Birmingham. London is where it comes from, though, really. I mean, Birmingham's behind, there's no doubt about it. Mm. Birmingham is, this, uh, London is the centre of punk, you know, it's the, it's the centre of the music world. And Birmingham, Birmingham people just do what London people tell them to do. If it comes from London and it's punk, they think it's good, whether it's good or not. They just do what London tells them to do. shop was started it was started as a not as a record supermarket but as an agit prop yeah. shop which had a political point of view go and get options. people can come in and just sit down and sort of talk to sort of talk about things you can't do that in most other shops most other shops they want you to come in and like buy a record and go out or buy whatever they're selling and they just want to get rid of you you know because there's there's no interest in anybody talking or doing anything that's why people come in and read the magazines and do things like that it was obvious that, that this shop would know about punk music from the beginning because People that work in this shop spend their time going to gigs. And if you go to gigs, you know what's going on because people tell you what's good. And if you've got ears to listen, you go along and see what's happening. I mean, that's the only reason why this shop was at the start of the new way, because everyone here was involved in it. I mean, and as soon as we first heard the music, we knew that this was the kind of music we've been waiting for for a long time. I mean, 
people come in to buy records and their attitude would be, well, I must get a new sound for this week. They get a piece of oral wallpaper and they take it home and they sit in their rooms and listen to it. Well, all that changed when people realised that there was a record that they really wanted to hear, not because it would make them sit down and forget about the world, but because it would make them get up and do something about the world, or at least feel good enough to go out and be on the street, and that was a change. Mm. It's just, I mean, it's just a matter of us realising that something was going on. And that whole Mr. Jones syndrome, you know, something is happening. But now it's getting bad because like people are coming and just buying every record without even thinking about yeah. it and not listening about it. Just because it's punk or something like that. You've got certain groups where they just buy straight off every time. It's just no, become a trendy thing now, isn't it? It's yeah. all punk, it's just a trend. Fashion. Yeah, it's just a fad. Well, they're still, I mean, they're oh, still optimistic about yeah. something. Oh, yeah. So, like, yeah. And, like, with people yeah. getting in, like, like, people getting into reggae and stuff like that, because that's exciting music, and it's interesting. Because the major record companies don't think that no, it's, it's a mass market yeah. record, and having made that decision, they're not interested in making those records available to the public. And if they're not available, people can't buy them. And given the fact that the music is made by black people, and there's a tremendous amount of racialism amongst white people in their attitude towards blacks, that also plays a part in it. But I mean, we feel, we feel really excited because boundaries are beginning to be broken down. Mm. We're finding that a lot of shops around the country are interested. In Germany too, I mean, we, we send records to a shop in Berlin. Oh, what? Right. I'm bringing their bike bag and you all look the fucking... Get on my Burn Island, right? Because here comes the adverts, right?
In Camden, auf einem abbruchreifen Lagergelände der British Railways, ist der Probenraum Rehearsals Rehearsal der Clash. Er steht vielen neuen Bands zur Verfügung im Moment Subway Set. sort of 
words that you usually get in rock records. They sort of take these, I write, say, a, an essay or something like that, and from that condense the words from, for a song. So it doesn't end up being sort of normal rock song, hopefully. It was formed about a year ago, exactly. And um, since then we've sort of been playing with different drummers. And playing with one drummer and then stopping for about three months. Because we've never had one drummer that we liked. Uh, why do you play punk rock? Um, I don't really think we do. Exactly, we don't play what everyone thinks is punk rock. We're more like sort of body holy, I reckon. Auf demselben Gelände über dem Übungsraum wohnt Rodent. Rody und quasi fünfter Mann von Clash. Oh, yeah. Load of old bollocks. That's where we were. Load of old bollocks. That's what all the new bands are. Nearly all of them copy the Sex Pistols or the Clash. How often of them are jumping on the bandwagon. And they're a load of crap. There's a couple of good ones. There's the Slits. Interview with them. Singer's German. You can speak to her. Uh, there's this group downstairs, Subway Sex, they're okay, they're a bit different. But uh, most of them are all like the same, they're all, you just get bored watching them. So, like when it started, we wanted lots of different sorts of groups, not lots of groups all trying to copy each other. That's why like the Clash and the Sex Pistols and, the only two like of the old ones that were any good. All the rest all just copied. What do you think about Reggie music? About what? Reggie music. Oh, Reggie. I've seen it. Green for the land, yellow for the sun that gives life to the land, red for the blood that was spilt for the land. It's great. Love it. I think. It's good. Uh, a lot of bands are influenced by Reggae. What do you think about it? Well, a lot of bands were influenced by The Clash and the Sex Pistols liking Reggae. No, a lot of them didn't know what it was until a, sort of ten months ago. All they thought Reggae was was... I Therefore, it's all Desmond Decker and things, but they sort of like lots of them didn't bother with it until recently, when it became fashionable. What have you done before you become a rodeo of the person? As little as possible. Uh, unemployed most of the time. Didn't work. Didn't like working. So I tell them I was in prison. Yes. <coughs> For insurrectionary activities. Expropriation of substances from other people, richer people. Stealing. Political activities. <laughs> That's what the angry brigade man said in court. Well, for sounds, um, being a paper that's geared to new music, to rock music, we became aware of the Sex Pistols, who were really the first band to uh, open up the punk rock thing. The music papers, along with everybody else, was tired of the, the old game, the old music business game, and in consequence got very involved and very interested in punk rock. And sounds was one of the first to really uh, pick up on it and to, to explore it and maybe although <clears throat> this is more a case of the national press to exploit it a bit. I mean the national press have exploited punk for its sensation value and uh, 
the violence really stems from their coverage and the fact that they've only really given coverage to the more violent aspects, not to any of the ideals and certainly not very much to the music at all. They, they fail to understand the music and uh, they fail to understand the ideals behind the, the change because I guess it affects their readership. Their readership is basically the generation uh, with which the punks are not, <laughs> or are, are dis disaffectionate. And uh, in some cases, they, they have encouraged the violence between a non-existent group of TEDs. They don't, they're not really, there is no real TED movement as such. That, that whole movement died out in the 50s. That was when they, they reached their peak. That was when they were the new young rebels. And it's now just a, maybe even kids who've got nothing better to do on a Saturday other than go in search of some violence or something that will give them a chance to appear in the papers. Well, we're Teddy Boys, we like rock and roll because we think there's never been a better music and we like our style of dress because we think it's the best. I don't like punk rockers, uh, but there'll always be fights between different factions. Let's face it, there's no war, so people have to. It's like, uh, if you like, bulls and herd fighting one another. It's human nature. The people are different. I don't like them. They probably don't like me. So I don't care. <laughs> Why don't you like them? Well, they, to me, they look effeminate. Um, they don't look like they're going to even be men when they grow up. They look like some sort of third sex. It's weird. It's strange. They look like invaders from another planet or something. Very odd. They just... Really, their whole culture is alien to ours. Right? That says it all. And uh, the thing we don't like especially is that they, they copy some of our styles of dress, like they'll put a drape jacket on, and then they rip it. You know? Stupid! And then they, they copy bits of our music and try and say it's new, and you know, it just sounds like rock and roll played very badly to me. And there's more and more teddy bears all the time. They just want to be different. They don't want to be like everybody else. And I think a lot of them, their parents were teddy boys. And they, and they, they start talking about it to their fathers, and, and they tell them how they used to get the clothes made and everything. And they want to be like their fathers, I think, maybe. It's 20 years ago. These guys yeah, will have children. The old teddy boys had children. I think these are a lot of the children. We was, we've been around a lot longer than anything else, any other form of dress or anything. And they've come along and saying, oh, we're white teds out, and we're that punks that we're this Johnny Rot on this and the jam and all this shit, you know? And they're trying to they're trying to put it across the country, starting in Britain, but we're not having it. That is why we give them a good idea every time we meet them. They just take to keep pick them off the out gear, like. they, can, they can have their global village and all the places they go to, but when they start coming around this area and all these well-known church clubs, they get a good idea. And that is us. Take they claim they wear drapes because they gent the shop, they reckon it's shops they're taking people. A, they're taking a mickey piss. They reckon they wear the drapes because it's shops people. No way. They're taking the mickey out of our music. They they're shop dressed. people, right? Why, why do people go and even see us when we walk down the road? So they, 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 they go, uh, the dustbin line is stupidly coloured here. Why bother? There's no point in bothering. It makes them look silly little boys and girls, which they are. Uh, they rip not. drapes up, don't they? They rip them up and they got old boys on and, and their socks, earrings, short hair. It all stems from a bit of skin, a bit of Ted. They're taking a the piss all the time. So everyone I see, bus along the road, in the swimming bars, I'll give them a good eye. You know, it's fine. Right. Then he's got a bit of red in his hair, blood. Yeah, right. Yeah. Shout yeah, this is it. They call it, it music. All the time. Right. They call it music. What do they call it? Right? They call it dancing. They reckon dancing is jumping up and down Jump like they're on down. a pogo stick. Huh. Is that dancing? No, it ain't. What, I mean, what energy can you burn yeah, up through that? And he had a dog collar on with a dog's chain round his neck and a little bit of leather where you hold onto the dog light at the end. And he had tickets all stuck over him with safety pins. And he just had all his shirts ripped, everything. And he, there's nothing good about that, is there? I look idiots. Take Mickey all the time. They basically started it by saying, they're going to wipe Ted's out. Ted's live in the past. All right, bring up the style lives in the past. But Ted's live for today, the music today. Rock and roll still lives and always shall live. It started way back, what, 1940s? Something like that. In fact, it's Domino's very first record. Something about 47, 48, something like that. Okay, and it's been going from then, and it's going today, and it'll be going tomorrow, 20 years hence. Right, punk rockers come along and say, 
OK, we're clever, we're big, we've got music. They may call it music, but it's not. Uh, they said they was going to wipe Ted's out. No way. That's why they get hiding. They get, they get themselves beaten up because they reckon they're bigger than us. The fights between Ted's and Punk's, it's not a new thing in a way, really, because you used to have the fights with the mods and the rockers, and the skinheads and the packies, Pakistanis. But, uh, in general, the youth of any generation if there's not a war on, they like to use their aggression on some way at football matches and things like that. So they, they've got an ideal thing to have a go at, which is the punk, from Ted's point of view anyway. It's very difficult to sort of say that you know, they just like fighting for the sake of fighting, but they feel as though they've got to use their energy on something. Im angesehenen Hundred Club nehmen die Jam, die sauberste Punkband, mit großem technischen Aufwand ihre erste Live-LP für Polydor auf. Alle ihre Konzerte sind ausverkauft, auch wenn der Saal doppelt so groß ist wie der hier. I'm gonna 
Die kommerziell erfolgreichste New Wave Band sind die Stranglers. Ihre erste LP war die acht erfolgreichste des Vorjahres. Die meisten Leute fragen sich jedoch, was die Stranglers außer ihrem Namen mit Punk gemein haben. Wir wollten sie dazu im Haus ihres PR-Managers Alan Edwards befragen, sie weigerten sich jedoch. We want to stay. We want to stay. We want to stay in our movie. Hey. Right, we want you. Only your statement why you don't want to stay in our want to stay in our movie. Because I'm no prostitute. Uh, yeah. And it's just you, a, you don't do. I don't want to sell any records in Germany. I want German bands to sell them in Germany. And you hate Germans, you say? Hey. Majority, yeah. Simply because we are German. No, because since, simply because you take and you don't give, you don't, you've got a lot of responsibility to the, the idea of Europe and you're just taking. I'll play to the people who want to hear us in Germany, but uh, otherwise I couldn't care if that. Uh, but a lot of people in Germany want to hear you and want to well, know then, something then about Then they're going to hear us next week. They didn't want to hear us nine months ago. See, I reckon I'm very suspicious of German motives. I reckon they're just opposed. You know? I don't believe they're genuine. Until they prove themselves, then uh, we don't want to know. You know? I don't understand your argument because well, you never do. I think punk now is a joke, actually. I don't think it bears any resemblance to what it started out as, and I don't think it's uh, fulfilled very many of its original aims in England, anyway. I mean, it's uh, it's been turned into a commercial carnival. Um, so quickly that the people who started it and people put the original ideas have lost control of what they're doing. Record companies and uh, the music business in general and the media have cashed in on it so quickly and they've taken everything out of it. They've taken the creativity, the ideas, the imagination out of it and they've put nothing back except money and that has actually killed it. I mean, I think um, the people who are responsible for making punk rock what it is, or making punk rock, never envisaged what has happened now. Yeah, they've I mean, lost I, out, basically. Yeah. I mean, they started the whole thing, it was their ideas, and they've really lost out on all the benefits of the it. The people who put it together were like people like Andrew Sosowski, who opened the Roxy Club, people like that. They've, um, they've been bought out by bigger concerns, by big companies, record companies. They've ended up with no money, nothing, and punk has been taken out as just another commodity to sell. So, in a way, it hasn't achieved any of its ideas. The original idea was to get away from the old music selling a product. The original thing for punk was that the kids could identify with it, they could talk, they could go up and talk to the bands, the bands right. would go to the same places as they would, they, you know, they could just see the bands all over the place, they weren't stars. But unfortunately it's very difficult because bands have got to get record company contracts, right? right? I mean, to be able to survive. And it's very difficult to see what, how they could have combined the two, you know, keeping it on the level with the kids right. and having the money, you know. There's no way that punk could have stayed 
As for Genesis, as there's no way Punk could yeah. have stayed as it was. Punk would have had to have evolved and become a big business. It's just unfortunate that it became a big business so quickly. And it's trod on so many people on the way up, that's the problem. You and know. a lot of the people have proved that once they're successful, they're just as rich and they're just as into being capitalists and they're just as into making money and, and forget the people who put them there, as was the old generation of the old farts or whatever. So the new wave has quickly become exactly the same as the old wave. I'm in most afraid. cases, in most cases. And unfortunately, I mean, the punk followers have got into the same thing as these sort of, um, the old hippies, you know, the old farts. As Rotten says, you know, that they, they only accept right. their own kind, they're not tolerant to other people, which is what they should be. I mean, the whole thing about anarchy was that, you know, Rotten you do was what saying you want personal to do. anarchy. Right. You don't interfere in anybody else's business, you keep to what you want to do, and that's how you should go. And unfortunately, it hasn't turned out like that. He's the only person that's kept doing kept it, really. The whole thing about punk rock was it didn't matter whether you were black, it didn't matter whether you were white, it didn't matter whether what your hair was, what you look like, whether you're ugly, rich, poor or pretty. But already there's a snobbery within punk where um, you've, got to, look you've got to have short hair, you've got to have tight trousers, yeah. you've got to have plastic clothes or whatever. And already they're as bad as the people with long hair who said that you, you couldn't be fashionable if you had short hair and this sort of thing. So it's a shame that punk has, uh, it's not fulfilled a lot of its original aims in a nutshell. And that's it, the cynics view of punk rock. <laughs> What next? <laughs> yeah, what next? Marquis spielen heute die Boomtown Rats. Obwohl an der Tür 700 Leute wieder weggeschickt werden müssen, ist es im Club so heiß und eng, dass der Sänger später auf der Bühne ohnmächtig wird. mit den Sex Pistols im letzten Jahr im April, die haben als Vorgruppe zu den Hot Rods gespielt. Und die waren musikalisch sehr, sehr schlecht. Der Sänger konnte nicht singen und der Bassgitarrist hat nur drei Seiten gehabt und der Schlagzeuger war vollkommen, vollkommen besoffen. Ja. Dadurch wollten wir das sehr schlechte Publikum angekommen und wir wollten keinen Punk mehr haben danach. Und über die Zeit, über die nächsten drei, vier Monate, die wir im Sommer gewerkt haben, war es sehr, sehr populär geworden durch, das, durch neue Mode und die Presse hat das sehr stark äh, angenommen und äh, viele Leute haben mich gefragt, ob ich nicht Punk buchen könnte und dann habe ich mir nachgegeben und äh, habe Punkgruppen gebucht im letzten Sommer. Das war ein großer Erfolg und seitdem machen wir Punk Rock. Was war denn vorher das Hauptsächliche? Rockgruppen, Hard Rock, Underground, ja, Hard Rock Gruppen. 
Und worin unterscheidet sich das Punk-Publikum und die Punk-Gruppen von den anderen Gruppen? Gibt es da Schwierigkeiten mit? Man hört einiges von Gewalt und sowas. Ähm, junge Leute kommen hier, um Musik zu hören. Ja, ob es Punk-Rock ist oder, oder andere Gruppen spielen. Ja. Leute kommen hier, um Musik zu hören, für den Marquis Club. Die kommen nicht hier, um Schlägereien zu veranstalten oder sich zu betrinken oder was. Nur gute Musik für wenig Geld. Äh, wie kommt denn das zustande, dass du als Deutscher hier das Marquis leitest, was ja so der wichtigste Laden ähm, in London ist? Als ich noch in Deutschland war, ich vom Marquis gehört und bin nachher nach England gegangen. Als ich in London war, bin ich zum Marquis gekommen und äh, mit Gruppen angesehen und mir gefiel das hier. Und dann habe ich gefragt, ob irgendwelche Jobs hier gehen und da habe ich in der Garderobe angefangen zu arbeiten und äh, hart gearbeitet, zwei, 14 Stunden am Tag und langsam mich hochgearbeitet. Nach drei Jahren buche ich die Gruppen hier und äh, manage den Club. Meinst du, dass Punk noch eine Zukunft hat und das ich ist in nächster Zeit? Ich, Punk hat eine große Zukunft. Denn alle Schallplattenfirmen in London sind sehr, sehr stark daran interessiert. Und es ähm, verkauft sich sehr gut, weil was Neues ist, was Verschiedenes, was anderes ist mit ihrer Mode. Und es ist neu für junge Leute. Ja, die haben kein, keine Lust mehr, in Konzerte zu gehen und sich Gruppen wie Yes oder Genesis anzuhören, weil es äh, zu kompliziert ist. Punk ist einfache. Einfache, harte Musik, ja, harter Rock. Sehr, sehr schnell gespielt wird, wo sich amüsieren können und mitmachen können. Und was hältst du persönlich von Punk? Äh, geschäftlich gesehen ist sehr, sehr gut für uns. Aber persönlich, also Musik, ich gehe nach Hause und höre mir die Eagles an. Well, it's like, I mean, you just go down somewhere like the Vortex and that, and you listen to half the groups and you see how boring they are and you find that. To Most people will be put to sleep by it all. Yeah. It's just just a couple of good bands and that's it. They'll go and make a lot of money. And make a lot of music. And uh, the rest will fade away and die. All the high blown ideals disappeared years ago. That's yeah, shocking, you didn't really expect that. Down. They become very watered down. Yeah. We're going to Germany the next month. Do you have any idea about Germany? Uh, yeah, they're all rich in Germany. <laughs> Lots of Deutschmarks. Apart from these three. Yeah, no, I don't know. I only know about the only things I'll bother reading about Germany, about the RAF. Because they're interesting, but reading about Willy Brandt and Chancellor Smith or whoever they all are is boring, so... Very efficient country, we're told. Very efficient. And he met me, yeah, and then he uh, met me, and we met, met him, met him. Right. Then we both bumped into that. Yeah. That's how we met. It was coincidence. And then we all met him together. And here we are, fucked up. And then we met him coming in there. That was the worst time. Yeah. No, we, formed, wait, we formed about a year ago. Yeah. Two years ago, right? No. Uh, people ask us this question all the time, you know. I'd say 18 months. 18 months, right? Mm. Can't you nick my fucking phone in the bag again? Mm. Mm. Why is Essen. Yeah. It's a bit dreamy. We haven't eaten since we've been here. We've been here three days. We haven't had a thing to eat yet. You don't want people to come in.
lot of trouble in Germany. Yeah, yeah, it's fucking horrible. I never want to come back here again. It stinks. I do, though. Unless we're at war. It's great. So far. What do you think like, of the German bird? It's been in hotels and it's been really horrible. People, a lot of older people have been very sort of like nasty to us. They're not sort of helping us at all. But it's the young people are great. They're great at like the concert tonight. Like, the the they ain't got a fucking hotel for us. The gigs are fucking yeah. useless. We ain't got a hotel. Sleep. We got, uh, the police came around, dragged us out from the hotel. You know, I mean, we really want to like Germany. Yeah. Well, I do anyway. I think it looks great. Depends if we can get a hotel or what. Yeah. A hotel, a hotel. A kingdom for a hotel. The group for a hotel.
Mark Mark